these two packages just arrived. Now, this one's looking a bit worse for wear and it doesn't sound right either when I'm moving it around. It sounds a bit clunky. I'm concerned about this one. I don't think it's been packed very well, despite me telling them to pack it really well. Um, this one looks good. Right, let's see what's in this one. This one looks better. It's got decent tape on it and that sort of stuff. This guy does seem to be very professional about what he's doing. He seems to know what he's doing from discussions I had with him. So I'm pretty confident this is good. It's been stapled as well. Oh. So this is my calibration data, apparently. Yeah, well it seems very well wrecked. Nice and thick. That's good. I approve. I approve of the packing quality. This one looks good. Okay. Here we go. Recognise it? The guy already said he's set it for 240 volts for me, so I don't have to mess with that. It's already been preset. It's a HP 3457A. Nice bit of gear. Decent one. It's been calibrated apparently, so this is hopefully going to agree with my meters or be very close to them. My hope is that this will be, well, pretty accurate and I'll be able to use that to check my calibrations on my existing gear which I haven't, hasn't been calibrated well sometimes for many, many years. Right, it's on the bench. Let's power it up. I've got it plugged in the power already. Power's already on supply. Can't set it at 230. Just slightly on the lower side, just to be on the safe side a little bit more. Because what can happen when you go to a piece of gear which has never been on 240 volts, like this has probably been on 120 all its life, um, what can happen is the filter, the input filter can blow up because it doesn't like the high voltage suddenly because the, the capacitors have aged a bit and that sort of stuff. And so the filter could easily blow up, could be absolutely no fault with the guy that supplied this to me. It could just happen. All right, it's just one of these things, you know, for the age and that sort of thing. So let's power it up. Dress 22, beat, and it is running. I've got no idea how to use this thing yet. <laughs> Let's um, shove a source into it and see what happens. So I've got the PDVS2 Mini over here, see on 10 volts, and this is reading close. Now, the room here isn't actually up to temperature, these have only just arrived, well this has only just arrived obviously, so I don't actually know how accurate it is at the moment, it's got to obviously be on for a while to stabilise, all that usual stuff, so it could be, it's not up to temperature inside and so it's going to be reading a little bit off slightly anyway. So, it's only three counts out right now, so that's you know, pretty good I suppose, and it seems nice and stable, I set it to 100 power line cycles, I did figure that much out, so I've got PLCs over here, and you can change it to what you want through this range. Let's just do 10 for example. That would be much faster sampling. You can see the, flop, the sample indicator over here. Hopefully you can see it. It's not the best angle for the camera I think actually. Does that work better? Here we go. It works better now. It's almost on the bench. You know, I'll just you know, pretend there's a piece of desk here. <laughs> here we go. There's a few things I've got to figure out on here like um, number of readings. I don't know what it's set to currently. Don't know. Uh, let's do 10. Probably improves the accuracy slightly more. Um, yeah, so there's all little things like that. There's lots of features to improve the accuracy and that sort of thing. So there is a lot of that in here which I need to figure out. And ultimately, I want to use this as a calibration check against all my other gear because I don't actually know truly how accurate everything is. Now, this can have more digits displayed. I just need to figure out how to do that. So I've had it on, I don't know, five minutes now probably, and so it's getting really close, it's getting better. So this is a one volt, it's getting much more like that is supposed to be. So I want to figure out how to get this other digit on there, and figure that out, there's a way of doing it. Okay, I figured out how to do the digits display thing, so you've got digits display over here, so you can choose it over here, put in number of digits, and put in six, for example, and that will display six digits. Well, two, four, six and a half digits. Now I've got a bit of a difference between here and here. I can't run 10 power line circles so it's not stable, it's going to be jumping around a little bit, but that's okay. So I wonder if I can actually do, can we do something as simple as doing seven? Still gives us that much, no difference. So that's fine. Two, four, six and a half digits. 
so that's working anyway so we can do that and that seems to be working all right now there are some like other functions you can do you can do like shift um, recall down to which is high res mode enter and that gives you the remaining digits as well apparently so <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to interpret this part yet, but yes, it's uh, it gives you that half digit, that seven and a half digit aspect aspect of it. Apparently, um, I don't know. I've got to play with this more yet, but anyway, it seems to be working, and it's fairly accurate. It's fairly close to this, but there are some differences, obviously. So let's go down to one volt on this thing. And you can see how close this one is. So this is three different places, so that's millivolts, one microvolt resolution. And we're going down to 10 microvolt resolution on, on the PDVS2 Mini. So, two volts. So there's probably a bit of a difference between the accuracy of this and the accuracy of this. Because don't forget, this is a 20-bit device, and because it's got limitations in that regard, as all things do which are digitally, digitally based the steps are not perfect at microvolt levels so you know, you're going to get some differences there between the various ones depending on the calibration points and things like that so there will be some differences in there I mean, 5 volts on here we're getting you know, 100 microvolts down so I think this is probably slightly off, but it's still warming up. It's been getting closer and closer the longer it's been on for. So it's only been on there for about probably 15 minutes, something like that. So yeah, it's it's still warming up yet. But it'd be interesting to see how this compares with other things I've got here as well. You know, my resistance standards and things like that. So I need to do those kinds of things. But the hope here is that I can actually, once this is warmed up and stabilised, it's going to be a trustworthy source. I mean, these two things here should be pretty close really in reality because this has been calibrated on a HP 3758A by Ian Johnston we made this thing it's been calibrated against that so this should be pretty good and this has just been calibrated too but I haven't actually read the documents yet so maybe it's been calibrated but it's off by a little bit and this has noted it down in the calibration data that it's off by you know 100 microvolts or something like that you know you just don't know I haven't read it yet so I'll have to do that too, open it up and read it, see what actual calibration data come out as. And uh, hopefully then I can use this as a source to know what I'm actually measuring on my other gear and see how they are all tracking along. So because like my signal multimeter there, I've had that for a couple of years now, two or three years. And so the calibration they would have would have shifted on that, you know, natural aging. Um, you know, the it's got a LM399 reference in there, I think it is in there. Yeah, 399H, I think it's in like um, but I think the same references in here actually and so you know they have an aging profile and so that would have drifted off a little bit because of the aging profile my Fluke A842A which is up there which is only five and a half digit meter that's very stable that's well aged so I trust that one quite well so basically I trust this and I trust the Fluke quite well and um, because they have, you know this is recently calibrated the Fluke is well aged and it was calibrated when I got it so I've had that for a few years as well but the aging profile means it shouldn't have drifted off much and now this has just been calibrated so we'll see what we get I suppose it's not too bad I mean, you can see it's still drifting up slightly it was a bit lower than that when we started so it's still stabilising and I should also say sorry for the mess of my desk I've got several projects going on at the go right now so I'm kind of just sort of cramming things on whilst I can do it but I wanted to check this out quickly and get into it and just make sure it's okay yeah catch you later.